Hey y'all, Bladed Angel here, and as promised in my non-car guys dictionary series, I figured it would also be helpful to explain the various types of car engines. In this video, I will only go over commonly used internal combustion engines, such as inlines, Vs, Ws, flats, boxers, and rotaries. I won't cover strange absurdities like single cylinder engines. Maybe someday I'll cover rare engine configurations in an entire video to their own. I say that now, but I probably won't ever. Anyways, onto the topic at hand. Starting this video off, we'll be talking about one of the most common engine configurations on the market. Chances are, the majority of y'all watching probably have a car with an inline engine configuration. Inline engines, also referred to as straight engines, get their name from how their cylinders are arranged in a row. Inline engines are easy to build, especially when compared to V engines, which we'll get to later. This is because both the cylinder bank and crankshaft can be milled from a single metal casting, and also because just in general, most inline engines tend to have less cylinders than most V engines. This normally results in a smaller and more compact design, which is perfect for making a low power and economic engine. This makes it a perfect choice for most compact cars, and even some mid-sized sedans. Both the base model Toyota Camry and Honda Accord use an inline 4 engine, not a V4. I know for my car enthusiast viewers, you're probably sick of hearing me beat this dead horse, but trust me, some non-car people still say this. Your Toyota Camry and Honda Accord, if it's a base model, it does not have a V4, it's an inline 4. So please stop saying V4. If you're ever wondering why your eBay listing isn't selling, it's probably because everyone viewing it thinks you're an idiot who doesn't even know the engine in their own car. So don't be lazy and learn what it is. Anyways, we're not done here since I can already hear my BMW fanboys fiercely typing in the comment sections, but my inline 6. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the inline 6. One of the biggest problems with the inline 4 engine is that it suffers from a lot of engine vibration, which is why they avoid high displacement layouts. Otherwise, they are no longer mechanically balanced. However, this problem can be resolved by adding more cylinders, which is why the inline 6 layout was introduced. The inline 6 was a popular choice amongst many automakers who want to make a performance vehicle with more power while still using simple and intuitive engines. The inline 6 has found its way into legends such as the Toyota Supra, Nissan Skyline, and many of BMW's performance cars. However, despite being simple, the inline 6 wasn't cheap to manufacture, and when it came to cost to power ratio, the V6 quickly became its successor. That's not to say that inline 6 engines are out of production, as even to this day, BMW still make a lot of their performance vehicles with inline 6s. However, many other manufacturers instead found a compromise and started to produce inline 5s instead. Moving on to V engines, V engines also get their name from how their cylinders are arranged. When viewed along the axis of their crankshaft, the cylinders and pistons appear to make a V shape. When compared to inline engines of the same cylinder count, V engines tend to be more compact, which resulted in them becoming a popular choice for engines with higher cylinder counts. Large arrangements like inline 8 engines were too large and cumbersome in design. To mitigate this issue, engineers quickly found out that it was more efficient to arrange 8 cylinders in a V shape instead. This is also another factor as to why V6s were favored over inline 6s. However, this never caught on with smaller engines like 4 cylinders. When it comes to an inline 4, it's already as compact as is, and it's already extremely cheap to manufacture since the V-shape is rather unnecessarily complicated for an engine that is already so small. It just wasn't worth the effort making a V4 for a car. Now, that's not to say that V4 engines don't exist, as some cars did attempt to make use of them. However, they found their usage and compact size more popular for motorcycles. But this video isn't about motorcycles, so back to the topic at hand. V engines are a very popular configuration for performance vehicles like American and Australian muscle cars, which exclusively use V8 engines. I don't count the V6 counterparts as muscle cars, nor the EcoBoost or four-cylinder turbo ones. Anyways, out until the topic anymore, when the V8 isn't enough, some companies even look towards making a V10. To list a few vehicles, the Dodge Ram SRT10, Lexus LFA, Dodge Viper, and Lamborghini Huracan use V10 engines. And it just keeps going as some companies decide that V10 still isn't big enough and use a V12. To list a few, Lamborghini Aventador, Pagani Zonda, and Aston Martin Vanquish. And when that still isn't enough, some cars like the Suzetta V16T, which, try to guess what engine this car uses, that's right, if you couldn't already tell from its name, it uses a V16. 
However, in the same vein that a straight 8 engine becomes too long and cumbersome from a dimension standpoint, the V16 also starts to suffer the same issue, as it starts to reach the limit of the V engine's practical use. So, how do we solve something when it starts to get too long? Make it wider, of course. Enter W engines. W engines get their name from their cylinder banks, which make a W shape. The original W engine uses three cylinder banks connected to one crankshaft, which makes it look like a V engine with a straight engine in the middle of it. Unfortunately, this proved to still be rather unnecessary, but that didn't stop a certain company from their pursuit of THICK. I'm losing my voice right now, but in the name of saying the THICK meme, I'm going to keep going. And seriously, why the f Indiana, are you still snowing? It's goddamn April. Of course I'm sick. This is stupid. Now my voice sucks, but I'm going to keep pushing onwards. In the meanwhile, f you, Mother Nature. Make it warm for once. Cars and coffee season just started here. Anyways, like I said, now we're actually going to go back to the video. Volkswagen Group, for whatever reason, gets off the W engines. And I mean they have a serious hard-on for W engines. They set onwards in the pursuit of its thickness and ended up creating a modern and efficient four bank method, which is basically shoving two V engines together and boom, now that's one thick engine. They started off by creating a W8 as a prototype in order to help them understand where to go as they pursue thicker and thicker engine layouts. This eventually led to them making the W12 and the Nardo concept. Volkswagen Phaeton and Bentley Continental GT, which then ultimately led to the W16 and the Bugatti Veyron, which in the engine is also quad turbocharged as well, because f you, it's a Bugatti, that's why. Even though I'm a Koenigsegg fanboy, even I can appreciate the development and effort it took Volkswagen to get the Bugatti's thick shape. Are you sick of the thick memes yet? Well, don't worry, the next engine on this list is the exact opposite. Flats. Yeah. You saw this one coming. If it ain't thick, it's flat. Where most auto manufacturers progressed from inlines to V's to W's in pursuit of thickness, some of them decided that flat is justice and went that route instead. A flat engine gets its name from its horizontally opposed cylinders. Flat engines have the pistons share a crank pin and move back and forth at the same time. Popular manufacturers that use flat engines include Subaru, Porsche, and Ferrari. A common misconception is that flats and boxers are exactly the same and thus interchangeable. In regards to that, think about squares and rectangles. All boxer engines are flat engines, but not all flat engines are boxer engines. In the case of the Ferrari F12 engine, it's a flat engine, but not a boxer. It's basically just a V12 that's 180 degrees to its side. Moving on to boxer engines, they get their name from the fact that their pistons look like they're punching, kind of like how boxers do. The pistons each have their own pin and are set at 180 degrees opposite of the opposing piston. They move back and forth opposite of each other. Here's a visual representation of the differences compared to a boxer and a flat engine in motion. Shout out to VW Vortex 4 members for explaining this one. And last, but most certainly not least, we've got rotary engines. The rotaries found in cars are not to be confused with the rotary engines used in World War I aircraft. Rotaries used in cars originated from Wankels, which is pistonless compared to the rotaries used in World War I aircraft. Regardless, let's drop the semantics and for the rest of this video, I'm just going to call them rotaries. Since I'm sure there are plenty of Mazda owners who would put me on the stake if I didn't. Anyways, the rotary engine is noticeably more compact and lighter than most other engine configurations. For their size and weight, they make considerable power, being about 1 horsepower per pound of the engine. And here is story time, as boy oh boy does the rotary have quite the history behind it. Many manufacturers were given licenses to produce rotaries, but in the end, most of them ended up discontinuing their usage after only a few years and several engine failures. Despite being praised for their smooth running, lightweight, and compact power, rotaries were extremely troublesome engines, as their reliability was god-awful and any attempts to make them reliable ended up with shoddy consistency between results. However, Mazda didn't back down when the challenge became too high, as they were stupidly determined to prove the world that rotaries could become reliable engines. Mazda started off using them in luxury cruisers, but soon found out their potential was best suited for high-performance sports cars. After several mediocre attempts, Mazda finally struck gold with their RX-7. Their most renowned rotary, pun intended, found its way into the 787B race car, which would be the first Japanese car and first pistonless car to ever win Le Mans. The 787B's victory was not from sheer speed alone, but also a result of its reliability. 
However, despite the success and massive cult following of the rotary, it would soon meet its end as the RX-8 didn't quite sell so well. In 2011, Mazda announced they would discontinue production of rotaries due to strict emission regulation, poor sales, and horrible fuel economy. Many of the fanatics have since said the company has resigned itself to mediocrity, and that its golden age is long past. Even if that's the case, they've already gone down in history, and they'll be known for making the little rotary that could. So, should Mazda ever muster the courage to try again, I'm sure the world will be waiting. That's going to be all the engine configurations I'll cover in this video, and mostly because my voice is giving out now. I'd also like to mention that at this point, I realized that I should probably make a video explaining the many components of an engine, because I think some of you guys watching this video are now more confused at the end than you were at the start. Other than that, thanks for watching, and as always, see y'all next time, Bladed Angel out.